Hello, everyone. I'm Thomas Aizan, and I'm an Android developer relation engineer working on machine learning. So with the rising processing power in mobile devices, it's now possible to run machine learning features and process sound, text, images, or even videos directly on the device. Uh, but providing low latency uh, for live experiences can be hard. And so today, I'm going to talk to you about how hardware acceleration can help. So we will start by reviewing the chips that are available on mobile devices that can enable hardware acceleration. Uh, and then we'll look at examples, uh, and one in particular, which is the post-detection algorithm. And finally, uh, we will see how we can use hardware acceleration for a machine learning feature in your own application. So let's review the hardware that is available on mobile devices. So it might actually feel uh, strange for mobile developers to consider the hardware uh, your application is going to uh, run on. Um, usually when you create a traditional app, you rarely think about the chip that will execute your code. Uh, most of the processing power happens on the CPU, which is versatile and available on any mobile devices. Uh, but with machine learning apps, going beyond the CPU and accelerating uh, your machine learning features on specialized hardware can actually make a huge difference. Um, so by, uh, for instance, by uh, using specialized hardware, you can uh, divide uh, your inference latency by 10 and enable live experiences like the post detection or augmented reality uh, filters. Uh, and you can also um, offload the CPU workload to other chips. Um, and finally, you can reduce the battery impacts as some hardware consume usually less power than the CPU, like the DSP, for instance. So we can group those uh, specialized hardware in three categories. Um, there are GPUs, graphical processing units, DSPs, digital signal processors, and NPUs, neural processing units. Um, so GPUs are often used for graphical rendering processes, uh, but they offer high throughput and massive parallelization, which is very handy uh, for machine learning processes, especially if you want to enable real-time experiences. Um, and they are also capable of handling floating point calculation. So um, you can reach good performance without having to quantize your model. Um, and actually, the GPU is often the most popular hardware for machine learning acceleration for Android developers. Um, then there are DSPs. Uh, they are mainly used for analog to digital and digital to analog conversion of voice and sounds. Um, they are designed to handle math-heavy processes, um, and they are also optimized for energy consumption or low energy consumption. Um, and finally, uh, there are not chips that are designed and optimized for executing machine learning, such as NPUs and TPUs. Uh, and so after revolutionizing machine learning and inference in the cloud in the past few years, those chips are now becoming uh, available on mobile devices. So currently, they are mostly available on higher end devices, but they are becoming more and more popular. And for example, uh, the Google Pixel 6 and 7 series embed the Google Tensor, uh, which uh, enables some key, uh, the acceleration of some key uh, Pixel features, such as uh, mobile eraser and on-device translation, um, which are available on other devices, but are optimized to take advantage of Google uh, Tensor chips. So if we can summarize uh, CPU isn't always the only processing unit uh, available on a mobile device. And depending on your model characteristic, you can uh, use a GPU or a DSP. Uh, or if the device has one, use NPU, TPU chips to offload the computing load uh, from your CPU and accelerate inference. So we reviewed the different specialized chips available. Let's now zoom in and see how acceleration can be helpful in a concrete example. So if you want to run machine learning inference on Android today, uh, there are several options available. So if you have some machine learning expertise and you need advanced control over the user experience or the machine learning process execution, you can use TensorFlow Lite. 
On the other hand, if you don't have machine learning experience and you want an easy to use solution, you can take a look at the MLKit SDK. MLKit is actually built on top of TensorFlow Lite, um, but it offers uh, machine learning enabled APIs that are optimized for mobile and production ready. So if you decide to build your own custom ML solution, uh, TensorFlow Lite is actually available via Google Play services. So you don't need to bundle it uh, with your app, and it is actually guaranteed to run uh, the latest uh, stable version of TensorFlow Lite. And besides, uh, TensorFlow Lite in Google Play services is not the official uh, machine learning inference engine on Android. Uh, so using it in your application will let you benefit of future APIs and services from Android's custom ML stack as they will be, as they were, uh, as they will be built on top of the inference engine. Uh, and it's already used by thousands of apps and more than a billion users monthly. So a few years ago, Google released Blaze Pose, uh, which is uh, a model following a new approach to human body pose perception. Um, and it works in real time in videos or static images. Uh, and the model returns positions of body points such as knees, shoulders, hands. So depending on your use case and the level of expertise, if you want to use BlazePose, today you can either download the BlazePose Lite model uh, and use it with TensorFlow Lite, or you can directly use the MLKit Pose Detection API and use, it, um, use the API basically as a ready-to-use solution. Um, and if we actually take some time to look at the performance of the MLKit Pose algorithm uh, and look at the benefits of hardware acceleration, uh, we can see that when uh, the, the um, model is executed on GPU, um, we are basically seeing uh, an, uh, the inference is running 184% faster than when we run it on the CPU. Um, and uh, if we run it on a TPU, then it's even faster, and it's basically 200 faster than the CPU. So that's one example of the benefits of hardware acceleration. Uh, but there are models that are even more optimized to uh, take advantage of GPU acceleration. And for instance, if you use MobileNet, which is uh, an image classification model, you can see up to 10x uh, latency improvements. Uh, so we discuss of the benefits of enabling hardware acceleration for inference. Uh, if you are using MLKit, you really don't need to do anything. Uh, MLKit is already configured to get you the best performance you can on the current device. Uh, but if you want more control, uh, let's review the step to add GPU acceleration uh, for TensorFlow Lite with Google Play services to your application. So the first step is to add the dependencies to your uh, Gradle, uh, build.gradle file in your application. Uh, so make actually sure that you migrated to TensorFlow Lite with Google Play services. And you can read more about it in the TensorFlow Lite documentation uh, on tensorflow.org. Um, and then actually, like for TensorFlow Lite, the GPU support can also be provided via Google Play services. Uh, and the benefits are the same. Uh, it reduces your app size, uh, and uh, it also enables you to run on the latest stable version of the GPU support. And you can note here that uh, we are using a package name that starts with com.google.android.gms, uh, which is the, with, for the TensorFlow Lite uh, GPU dependencies. Uh, and that indicates that the GPU support implementation is provided via Google Play services. Uh, then in your Kotlin code, uh, you will initialize the TensorFlow Lite instance uh, with a Google Play services task. And uh, you will then call uh, set enable GPU delegate support true on your TensorFlow Lite on your TF Lite initialization options to enable the GPU delegates. Uh, if the initialization is successful in the callback, uh, you will call the delegate factory, the add delegate factory on the interpreter option, and you will pass uh, an instance of GPU delegate factory. So the code I walk you through uh, lets you create a TensorFlow instance using the GPU delegate and enable hardware acceleration. But in addition of just enabling it in your code, uh, you can also uh, adapt your model to leverage the GPU. 
So for instance, uh, one thing you can do is actually consider using a model that is optimized and built to take advantage of GPU acceleration uh, and adapt it to your specific use case. Uh, so for example, I was just talking about model net uh, that you can use for image classification. Uh, you can also look at deep lab for image segmentation, or you can look at pose net for pose estimation. And it's actually an alternative to blaze, blaze pose that I just talked about before. Um, so it's optimized for GPU uh, acceleration. Uh, keep in mind that it detects less key points than blaze pose does. Um, and then uh, the second step you can take is to make sure that you avoid uh, some specific operations. Uh, for instance, the reshape operations, uh, such as uh, batch to space, for instance, um, you probably want to avoid using them on the GPU. Uh, they are quick on the CPU, but they are particularly expensive to run on GPU. Uh, and also another thing to keep in mind, GPU are designed to process images and texture using RGBA. Uh, which is coded on four channels, uh, the red, blue, uh, red, green, blue, and alpha channel. And so if your model is actually uh, using four dimension tensors as input, it's going to be signif significantly faster uh, to run it on GPU. Um, and you can learn more about how to optimize your model uh, for the TensorFlow Lite uh, in the TensorFlow Lite documentation. Uh, and for even more insights, uh, you can actually take a look at the TensorFlow Model Analyzer command line tool, uh, which enables you to evaluate the GPU compatibility on your model, of your model. Uh, and so for instance, you can see an example here of the command line, uh, and you need to pass GPU compatibility equals to true to have um, GPU compatibility specific insights. Uh, you can learn more about it uh, in the TensorFlow documentation, and there is even uh, uh, collab uh, notebook that you can use to get familiar with it. Um, and I talk about how to enable the GPU delegates, uh, which is a great way to uh, enable um, acceleration. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, the GPU is not the only way for you to enable hardware acceleration. And you can take a look at the neural network API delegates uh, to enable uh, inference on DSP or NPU. Uh, same thing, that's also something that is uh, documented, uh, very well documented in TensorFlow documentation. So to fully benefit from hardware acceleration, uh, you need to make sure that your model is using operations that are supported by the delegate. Uh, and you can review the list of operations uh, supported for each delegate, again, in the TensorFlow Lite documentation. Um, and also remember that uh, the acceleration delegates don't support yet the custom operations that you created yourself. Um, and actually, if one of those operations uh, in your model are, are not supported by the delegate, you will get the following error at runtime. Uh, and so what's going to happen is that this op specific operation is going to be executed on the CPU instead. Uh, so if your model is actually splitting the execution between uh, the CPU and the GPU, uh, the back and forth is likely going to significantly increase the execution time. So for some cases, um, it might be better to either fully run it on the CPU or to re-engineer your model to make sure that it only uses, uses supported operations. Uh, and so as you can see, uh, hardware acceleration is very much the way to increase uh, execution performance, but it can be a complex task. And finding the optimal processing unit uh, in your model um, sometimes can be difficult. So that's why we are currently building uh, an acceleration service for Android. And so um, the way it's going to work is that you will be able to pass your model, uh, your sample, um, some sample inputs, um, and also the expected, the expected results. And the acceleration service will then run a benchmark to evaluate uh, the optimal uh, hardware available on device and tell you basically which of the CPU, DSP, or NPU, if it's available, you should use to uh, run inference. Um, and so this is something that is currently in early access. Uh, so we are accepting applications, uh, and we aim to ship it uh, publicly early next year. Uh, and you can go to the ML uh, Android developer documentation to learn more about it. 
So we covered a lot. Uh, and uh, you can see that you can already use hardware acceleration in your application today. Um, but we are actively working on making the process even easier in the future. Um, so ML in, in general and ML in Android is a field that is constantly evolving. Uh, so if you want to continue to learn more about it and stay up to date, uh, visit d.android.com ml. Thank you. <laughs>